Okay, with this fourth degree polynomial, our goal here is to find the intercepts. The x-intercepts and what this problem is referring to as the g-intercept. The g-intercept you can think of as being the same thing as the y-intercept. So y-intercepts always occur whenever x equals 0. So to find this, we're going to evaluate the function at an x value of 0. So g of 0 is going to be 4 times 0 to the 4th plus 28 times 0 to the 3rd plus 40 times 0 squared, which works out to be 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. So as an ordered pair, that's going to be 0, 0. Now to find the x-intercepts, it's important that we factor this polynomial. In its factored form, we're going to be able to look at it one factor at a time and figure out when each one of those individual factors equals 0. All right, so getting started with our factoring, we want to think about a greatest common factor first. Now all three of these terms are definitely multiples of 2, but they're also multiples of 4, and they also happen to each have x to the second power. So I'm going to factor that out first, and on the inside kind of think to ourselves 4x squared times x squared would give us 4x to the fourth. 4 times positive 7 makes positive 28, and x squared times x makes x cubed. And finally, 4 times positive 10 makes 40 and x squared times 1 would be our x squared. So on the inside here, it really is x squared plus 7x plus 10. From here, we can do a little bit of additional factoring by thinking about breaking apart the x squared plus 7x plus 10. To do so, I want to split it into two binomials, and I know that x out in front, the x squared, is going to split up as x and x because it's just one out in front. The next thing I want to look at is the 10 at the end. I'm going to list that number off to the side and list out all the different ways to factor 10. Now it could be 1 times 10 or it could be 2 times 5. In this case, because it's a positive 10, we're looking for the pair that adds together to give us the middle number, 7. So 1 plus 10 makes it 11, but 2 plus 5 is going to add up to 7. So we're going to use 2 and 5 as our numbers here to go with the x's. Now we also have to be careful that the sign works out to be a positive 7x in the middle. So in this case we're going to do positive 2 and positive 5 to accomplish that goal. Now we could distribute this back out, FOIL if you will, and um, double check our factoring to make sure we got to the same thing as x squared plus 7x plus 10. Alright, now that we've done all of our factoring, to locate our x-intercepts, x-intercepts are going to occur whenever the whole function g of x equals 0. So we could plug in a 0 on the left hand side where the g of x would be. All right, But to accomplish this, because we did our factoring first, we can kind of look at it one factor at a time and say what would I plug in for this x in order to make this factor equal 0. And since everything's multiplied together on the right hand side, if this is equal to 0, then the entire right hand side will equal 0, because 0 times anything is 0. So this first factor, the 4x squared, if we plug in x equals 0, would make that equal 0. I'll go ahead and write it up here as well. For our next factor, we think to ourselves, what would I plug in for that x? And then add 2 to it to make that 0. So negative 2. And for the last one, x plus 5, if we replace the x with a negative 5, negative 5 plus 5 would make that factor equal 0. All right, the other way to think about this is we could set each factor equal to 0 and solve down, and you would get the exact same values, just like I did on that last factor, the x plus 5. All right, as ordered pairs, these are going to be 0 for our x value and 0 for our y value or g of x value. Negative 2 for our x value, 0 for our y value, and negative 5 for our x value, 0 for our y value. And that's how you could write them as ordered pairs. All right, hope this helps out. Good luck with factoring polynomial functions and finding the intercepts.